everyone, welcome to Life Joyfully Done. I'm Jen and today I have a very special video for you that I've never done before, but I got some requests, so here we go. Today I'm going to be going over with you um, the ins and outs of trading pins by mail. Alyssa and I just returned recently from a global competition for Destination Imagination, and we had so much fun volunteering at the disc booth, which is where they sell, like, uh, what is it called? Souvenirs, but mostly pins, and you guys know how much I love pins. At Global Finals, there is a lot of pin trading going on. I got many, many of the sets that I wanted, but a few slipped through my fingertips, so. <laughs> I'm not crying, you're crying. I've been trading by mail and thought, why not share with you guys how I do it because you know, sometimes pins get lost and I, I'm hoping that this like tutorial, I guess, will help uh, ensure that that does not happen to you. So let's go ahead and dive into it. I'm gonna show you the supplies that I use and um, be sure to watch to the end because I have a couple tips to help you save money uh, because shipping pins by mail can get expensive. There are many Disney pin trading groups out there on Facebook as well as I only know of two for Destination Imagination. I'll link the ones that I'm a part of down in the description for you so you can check them out. Um, but the first part of trading by mail is of course talking with someone that has something you want, settling on what pins you guys wanna trade for. Once you've settled on a trade with a person, uh, you're going to want to take a picture of the pins that you guys have agreed on and exchange those photos because then there's no um, miscommunication and if there was, you can rectify it before you've packaged all the pins up and send them out. Uh, I haven't had that happen to me yet, but I think maybe that's because I do send the picture ahead of time. So now the supplies that I use, uh, they vary depending on how many pins I've traded, but rule of thumb, I either use bubble wrap to keep the pins safe or I use craft foam. And sometimes, you know, all of us have this laying around, an old um, Amazon package. And I always secure my pins. Well, I can't say always. Most of the time, I secure whatever pin I'm trading, which this pin I'm trading to Miss Abby, uh, one of my dear friends in the um, Maryland Destination Imagination community. And uh, what I do is I take the backs off of them and then you just secure them to whatever media you're gonna use. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and just use this because this is free and you know easy. Then I can secure it to the um, media I'm using simply because this will keep uh, them from falling out if there is a rip to your envelope. And then you can just go ahead and wrap that pin safely so that it doesn't get scratched up. Um, a lot of times I will then go ahead and just tape this because it's not gonna get on the pin because I've secured it with the bubble wrap and it kind of creates like a bag for the pin as well so that hopefully it, like again, I said, if there's a hole in your envelope, it won't fall out. You could go a step further and put it into like a little Ziploc bag. I usually have like the sandwich, not sandwich size, the snack size that I use because, um, you know, pins fit, fit in there just fine. But if you have a larger trade, you might wanna do a sandwich bag. Now there are a lot of different um, padded envelopes that you can choose when uh, trading by mail. I have this one here that actually has, well, there it is, the dimensions of the mailer. One I also use quite frequently is just, a, it's a smaller one for those single trades, one or two pins. But I prefer the ones that have the measurements on them uh, because I do often mail my stuff from home and this just ensures that I put the right dimensions on the um, form that I fill out online. A bonus tip I would like to share with you is keep a notepad. A notepad of all your trades so that you, you know, don't forget one or if you know you think you traded for something but you just can't remember, this notepad is going to be a lifesaver. And once your pins arrive, 
just mark them off. Then you don't have to worry about it anymore and you know you've received them. I also will mark off when my um, the people I send to let me know that they've gotten them just so that I know, okay, I don't need to follow up with them as in regards to did they receive them. I oftentimes also add a note in my envelopes. This way, you know, when they're excited to open up their package, they don't always look to see who it came from. So this will just verify and they can go ahead and mark off on their notepad that they received from you and hopefully reach out and let you know that uh, they got them. At this point, if you aren't interested in um, saving money while you're pin trading on online, go ahead and skip to the next chapter and you can go from there. But if you're interested in saving money, let's dive into this part. I use a online service called PirateShip.com and let me tell you, it saved me so much money on shipping pins by mail. I can't even tell you how much it. I've been pin trading online since like 2019 and it's, it's adding up for sure. Um, so if you're gonna wanna try and save some money and do that as well, you're gonna need some sort of a food scale to, white, to weigh your package, and you're gonna need a printer to print the labels, and um, this is where those envelopes with the measurements on them comes in handy, because then you have you know your proof in case, because like I've had a couple times where the USPS decided that I didn't input my information properly, like the package was bigger than what I said or whatever, so they charged me more money. Well, I was able in one case to, you know, dispute that because I told them, hey, the information was directly on the envelope, so it was six by nine. <laughs> and they actually ended up refunding me. So anyway, to avoid that, I like to use these mailers and then when I am weighing the package, I weigh it with the package itself, but I add a piece of eight and a half by 11 because you have to um, account for the weight of your label when you have it on there. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. And so once you get the, your weight, and you have your measurements, you just simply input that all into Pirate Ship with the address of your recipient. It's really simple to do. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like me to do a tutorial on that as well. Um, I know sometimes websites can get a little confusing, so I'm happy to do that as well for you guys. Now that you've done all the work of getting the label, you're gonna want to take your pins out of your mailer so that it's as flat as possible because that just makes it easier to go ahead and attach the label. Uh, once you've done that, then you can go ahead and put your pin inside and seal it up. Uh, I always add an extra layer of tape across the back. Let me just show you real quick. I'm not gonna add the tape, but so this has like a self sealing thing that you can pull off and then fold it down. I always add an extra piece of tape right there just to, um, ensure that like these side portions are completely sealed. I know, I, I I don't know, I don't wanna say I'm, oh, I don't even know what the word is, but I just, I really wanna make sure that the pins get to my recipient safely. That's what it comes down to. On PirateShip.com, you can choose from several different mail carriers. Typically for pin trading, USPS is gonna be the least expensive. And regardless of which one you choose, I highly recommend that you do what I do, which is go to the mail carrier and have them weigh the item and give you a receipt so you have that just in case problems arise. I always, always, always share the link to the tracking information to my re recipient. Um, that's just rule of thumb across the board, even if you just go to the post office, because you want to have proof for your recipient that it was mailed out, they can track it from there. And if there is ever an issue, you have that to fall back on. Um, I would also ensure that when you are either buying on pirate ship or you're going to the post office that you have insurance for the value of the pins. Uh, nowadays, most times when you mail, you at least have $100 worth of insurance on the package. So typically, you're not gonna have to add extra, but maybe that's something to speak with your recipient about. Um, 
I guess it's really up to you guys, but I always try to make sure that I have the dollar amount covered just in case something ever, ever, ever happens. All right, your package is ready to go. You've done all the steps that I've spoken about and it is time to get this lovely package off to your recipient who's probably impatiently waiting for their gorgeous pins. <laughs> Once you receive your pins from your sender, go ahead and reach out to them and let them know that you have received them. It's always nice to hear that the pins have made them safely to the recipient. I know there's been many times that I stress out that it hasn't been received, so please do that for your person, okay? If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, or you're interested in Disney, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, very soon here, I'm gonna be opening up all the mail trades that I did with Destination Imagination. Uh, I have maybe like 10 envelopes, I think, to open. So if you guys wanna watch that, please hit that subscribe button, like I said, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.